that are like you just like we hope you have a day went well but if like uh, some horrible person got cancelled and you're like oh my god it's butter and bacon mm. multiple if, uses it's all very mutable and different things mean different things in parts of the country so mm-hmm. if George Osborne's wedding was suddenly what George Osborne's wedding was suddenly oh that email was butter on bacon did you read it I, I never got to see it I saw it's the clips wild the person who wrote it comes off as like it's like you're not it's not dangerous liaisons calm down you're not the, um, Madame de Torvel like and apparently you... he knows who it is and he's taken him to court because they're saying it's a campaign of harassment it, I mean, it, I feel like he deserves whatever he gets. He, he does, but I, I do think it is... Um, it's a, it's, it's like, oh, you're a nasty I, person. I called Yummy, because her book's just out, and it's called The List, and it's about virtually exactly the same thing. It's an anonymous list that comes on Twitter a week, a couple of weeks before someone's wedding. And I was like, has George Osborne just lived the plot of... Is he living the plot of the list? And Yummy was like, Rude. oh, my God, I've had so many emails. She was like, I've had so many texts from friends going... She's like, it's great PR for the book. I mean, we... I mean... <laughs> We were both going not to exploit someone else's pain, pain. like the victims yeah. of the thing. Right. I'm being titles. The Spontaneity Shop presents the Guilty Feminist Watchers and Just Like That, the Sex and the City Reheal. With me, Deborah Francis White, and my very special guest, Jessica Regan. Season two, episode four, alive. Hello, it's me, Deborah Francis White, predictably, and here with me, fresh from the smash hit run of Strike, about the dumpster workers who took to the streets for two years to protest apartheid, which we hope will be returning next year. Multiple audiobooks and with a slate of computer games coming out this year, it's Jessica Regan. Hello, how are we? Jess. Yes. You guessed it on our last season of the Reveal. Sure uh, as a whole, how did you get on with season one? Of and just like that, and were you excited about season two? You know what? It really got me towards the end, and I found myself, you know, deeply emotional at the last episode, which totally snuck up on me because, like, I think, like everyone else, I sort of started off really excited, felt very let down and confused by a lot of the choices, but was finding little moments to cling on to and, oh, there's my guy, there's my girl, you know. And uh, as as actually you've talked about in this podcast, like how great Anthony is, very much enjoying Seema. But yeah, it was it was kind of tough. But the last episode, her, her you know, in that outre couture dress, it just... You know, and I was really hoping Samantha would pop up, but she didn't. And I still sort of felt like this kind of emotional catharsis from it. And I was like, well, it got me. I felt like surely lessons have been learned. Surely. 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 Some, particularly like a lot of the fans, like yourself and myself, were picking up on slight inc- timeline inconsistencies and stuff. And I was thinking, you've got to have listened to the internet. Like, there's so many of us who have a store, a bank of information. Some person who would be delighted to just be in the writer's room going, well, actually, no, Harry's mother died 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Like, someone who could, keep, if we can keep it straight, how do they not have someone keeping it straight? I had high hopes. Just get a fan in, just get a super fan in. That's what I'm saying. I, get us, get you, yeah, get I me. I would call myself a fan. I wouldn't call myself a super fan. There's people who know a lot more about Sex and City. Well, I don't me. know. You're pre- you, you have deep cuts, my friend. I do have deep cuts, but deep there cuts. are people that, you know, have watched it again and again and live for it. And I think there are people that will know everything who who will be the people that update the online wiki Sex and the City or something. Yeah. Why would you not just get one of them in? Why? I don't know. It's Cause, very cause they tricky would, to know. You'd make their lives. They'd be so happy. I'm sure they wouldn't, they, you know. So I had high hopes. And so far... Mm. Those hopes have not been... I think they've tried. I do think they've tried. To it's more listen. fun. And they've tried to go, okay, let's put some sex in. But it feels a bit so like... So much sex, so much areola. Yeah, sometimes there are scenes where you're just going, this is like a photocopy of the old Sex in the City. They've gone, what's the thing the old Sex in the City would have done? And it's like a pastiche of itself. Um, and, and I don't think it's landing because it's not coming from the same place. And storytelling is a very tricky little thing. Yeah. I think the biggest thing you've touched on in your previous episodes of this season is there aren't these thematic links mm. taking us by the hand and walking us through while we're seeing sections and things. So when something is working on a thematic sort of thread, we don't mind if it's not topped and tailed. Mm. But what happens here is stuff is not being topped and tailed. It slices, but we're not given that kind of storytelling justification so like I remember like no one after Miranda got picked up by 
Che's ex-husband there was like no reference to it in the following episode mm-hmm. and that was like the big reveal at the end of the first episode now he's back in this episode and we'll get to it but yeah well let's let's get into it let's so i'm going to do a little recap of what happened okay so this is going to be very brief guys Carrie wants her former Vogue editor Enid to recommend her book in her Goop-style newsletter and ends up getting embroiled in Enid's startup magazine for the elderly. Miranda ends up in a threesome with Che and their husband, former but not really, threesome but not really because Miranda gets a cramp. Charlotte and Harry have sex and his ejaculation is invisible and an uncomfortable conversation about semen occurs at lunch. So much. Semen talk. Lisa Todd Wexler has a party and no one comes because her husband forgot to send the invites. Gloria Steinem appears. Yay. And Carrie says Your she's... Mate. Carrie says she's in my best friend. Uh, Carrie's... Uh, she came to my show and I met her once and I've got some photos with her. Literally, that's it. We've had some emails. Uh, Gloria Steinem appears and Carrie says she's admired her all her life. And Gloria says, I guess that means we care about the same things. And really? Because Carrie didn't vote. <laughs> And dated a politician who was into water sports that I'm pretty sure was a Republican. And her whole thing was, how can I dress like Jackie O? <gasps> Bitsy, Bitsy von Muffling sends Carrie a dick pic of a man she's trying to set her up with. What the actual fuck? Women don't do this. We do not do, we don't this. do this. We don't do this. If I said to you, look, I know you might not think this guy's your type, but just heads up. <laughs> He's got a hose on him. He's got a large penis. (laughs) Now, firstly, I would never say that to you because I don't think that's what drives you. But if you'd said to me, oh, I'm really just fancy, you know, like a just a fun fling Mm. or a one night stand or something, just really feeling frisky. And I said to you, well, look, I know a chap who's actually, you know, out seeing lots of different people at the moment. And he's my, he he might not be quite your type, but just between us. Between us, I've heard. I mean, again, I would never say this, but just say, just say I did. Just say mm. probably I did. He's apparently he's very well hung. I would then, to the, the leap it would have to take, if we were having cocktails, we were, like maybe, 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 maybe in some parallel universe, I'd say that. Okay, fine. But then you're at a party with Gloria Steinem. We're all at a party with Gloria Steinem. Like just, yeah. that's the, that's, that's where we're at now. Having a great time. There's loads of really impressive women. Everyone's talking very politically. Everyone's talking about age being the next frontier and it's a revolution and yada, yada, yada. Would that be the moment uh-huh. that were I to have were a picture, you to have a of, picture this of this man's large flaccid penis? baby's arm holding an apple. Because to be honest. It was flaccid. You're no so right. No one sends a flaccid picture. It was flaccid. Do you know why it was flaccid? Because you're not allowed to show an erect That's penis. That's right. Right. Now, but no one sends a flaccid oh, picture of a penis. That poor intern who had to Google search that image. And find <laughs> the, the the printouts, you know, the discussions. Flaccid penis without that's that not could, in copyright. That could belong to a seventy plus gentleman. I mean, just yes, a flaccid penis out of copyright. I mean, search. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I went to Harvard. <laughs> I really fully hope no one was forced to have that photograph taken. Maybe they just advertised elderly gentleman, happy to have flaccid penis, photographed, $500, no questions asked. Oh, yeah. However, buy out. Matthew um, Broderick was like, I'll do it. <laughs> oh, God, don't say that. He's only in his 50s, surely. He's been through enough. Surely. But if that is Matthew Broderick's penis, uh, congratulations, yeah. SJP, because it's quite large. Well done. I mean, it don't, although is it? It's we don't know. We didn't have people scale. People are growers. People are showers. But you just also, don't know. We just didn't see it in any kind of scale. Like you can blow up There's anything. Nothing with your fingers, more unsexy than so to speak. Penis, anyway, like, awful. Anyway. Just fucking awful. No offense, anyway. man. Like so, you know, what I would like to do is, a picture of, shall we say? I a want to start of. with what did we like about this episode? Uh, it's absolutely, really easy and to I've go got in. some stuff to say. Okay, great. What did you enjoy? Steve's revenge body. Oh. Oh, interesting. I love that justice for Steve, right? Because mm. I was very, a lot of us were very upset. So, um, we Steve Heads over here uh, at his treatment last season. Brady I've always broads. thought he was wonderful. Yeah. I always thought I loved his character. I loved the positive masculinity he portrayed. I loved the way he knew how important Rhonda's friends were to her. Mm. And I always look for that in like partners and my friends when they make me feel like part of the family. I'm like, mm. I love that you're with my pal because you get how important this is, right? So I always was a big Steve stan. So when they, the camera, we hear this banging noise, you know, Miranda's sleeping on the couch. She's, you know, putting her child first. She's being there for Brady through his breakup and she's staying in the house, which is, you know, I imagine just awkward as anything. We hear this banging. We're like, what the hell is that? I'm like, please, please let us not cut to 
Brady having rebound sex because I saw way too much of that in the first series. Mm. And then it's Steve on the boxing bag looking fine, Mm. looking virile and gorgeous as we always knew he is and was. Mm. Like they were putting him out to pasture way before his time. And I was just like, thank you for restoring some of Steve's dignity. He has been keeping it tight. Mm. Mm. (laughs) So that was, that put me in a good mood. That was nice. I enjoyed seeing Enid again because Always. I felt Enid, Enid's character, I loved the first episode with Enid where Carrie goes into Vogue. She needs to make some more money because she's now Amazing. bought her own place. And apparently three articles in Vogue is going to be able to buy you a flat in Manhattan. Well, but she anyway. got them up to $4 a word. $4 a word. Remember that? Remember those she, days? Do you remember she was in that gorgeous little striped suit? Oh, stunning. And she had a really chic new haircut. She, she broke fab. it up with Aiden. She looked fine. Yeah. And Enid was always like, what does Carrie Bradshaw know about handbags? What does Carrie Bradshaw know about men? And then finally she said, what does Carrie Bradshaw know about shoes? And Carrie just stops her and goes... Enid. Yeah. Men, I may not know. <laughs> Shoes, I know. I know. And she laughs and then she walks on and says, walking. It was such a great portrayal. And I loved that this time when we saw her, she says, oh, I thought they were your highlights. I thought that was your shade. Because it's such a a cutting. It's like a, there's nothing really wrong with saying that to somebody. No. It, but except there is. But we know those people and you're like, Okay, I Enid is a phenomenal character because Candace Bergen is a phenomenal actress and correct. she gives it to us every time. 100%. This this lady could be this one note dragon and actually some of the youngers in the podcast universe of that thing who are playing a, a, an emotion or a note. Mm. Candace Bergen does not come on and play haughty. Mm. She's a three-dimensional character who's like, I'm awkward around grief. I, like, she sells mm. me that character so well. I'm vulnerable. I'm putting on a mask. Yeah. I also am quite tough because I've been around a long time. Yeah. Now, yes. here was the sticking point. Uh-huh. And I'm going to do an, uh, one of my deep dives. Which I'm here for. Cuts. She says to Carrie, and this is the sticking point for Carrie, she says, women our age. Women our age yeah. are neglected. Women our age this, women our age that. And Carrie's in her 50s and Enid's in her 70s. 70s. And so she's basically saying, you know, post-menopausal women yeah. or late menopausal women, whatever. But she says it three times. And Carrie is like, sorry, not to be rude to a friend. She's, Carrie's saying not to be rude, but I am not. She's at Seema, I think. I'm not in my 70s. And Seema says, that's right, Seema. Seema says, no, no, we're sophomores, we're not seniors, which I really mm-hmm. liked. That was sh- shades of the old sex. And absolutely. I was like, that's a lovely little phrase. We'll take that. Sophomores, she not seniors. It's absolutely. Delicious. Absolutely brilliant. Um, however, <laughs> the reason this to me is continuity error is... I know what you're going to say. Is, do you know what I'm going to say? Exactly what you're going to say. Do you know what I'm, okay, you say the episode in which... Tell me the episode. Splat. 100% that, yeah. So when... At the fancy New York party, uh, the 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 peer the the old peer of Carrie's who says, "Ah, New York's done. New York's Ooh. over," and falls out the window. Yeah, iconic, iconic, iconic episode. episode. Iconic. Um, she says, "I'm so bored, I could die." die? And she <laughs> slips out this window where she's smoking a cigarette. Absolutely incredible Amazing. episode. At during that episode, Enid says to Carrie, "Why are, are you, you dating waiting in my, my pool? pool?" She says, "You're dating the Russian. Why am I not dating him?" Mm-hmm. And Carrie goes, "Because I am." And she says, "She says, why am I not dating him, Carrie? He's a wonderful man." And she says, "Because I am." And she says, "But there's hardly any men in my age group. It's such a small pool, like a yeah. wading pool. It's a wading pool." Yeah. She says, "Why are you wading in my pool?" Yeah. So she's acutely aware that while. Petrovsky and uh, she are the same age. That Our contemporaries, Carrie yeah, is twenty years younger. Yeah, and so now suddenly she thinks they're the same age. Also, if you were, I would have almost forgiven that if they hadn't left it on the table. And again, if you or I were in that wife's room when she sees the dick pic on the phone, we'll get to it. There's a kerfuffle. There's a mix-up. But wasn't that? Are you waiting in my pool again? It was mm. right there. How mm. much of a thrill would that have been for the fans if she had been like, mm. oh yeah, the pool wader, here we mm. go again. Mm. That would have been such a nice deep cut for us. Because it, it is, and also I was a bit sad that she had like ditched Wallace Shawn, um, the, the Hobbit as she called him. Uh, I was kind of oh, hoping, yes. I was hoping that that had, because they're together at your one's funeral. Mm. So I kind of hope, hoped that stuck because he was a food critic. That's a great job. Yes, absolutely. I, I think I quite liked the arc that Carrie at first was like, no, I don't want to be in pictures with anyone with a walking friend, blah, blah, blah. Nice. And then she came around yeah. and went, I mean, because that was 
kind of ageist enable us to totally. Awful. I didn't like Seema saying that, and I and I didn't like seeing her avoid people with walking frames because I thought this is super ableist and 100%. super ageist. But I liked that she went when she journey. was in the room, she went, "Oh, hold on a minute. This is you know, Gloria Steinem's calling this a revolution. Age is the final frontier." Yeah. Women are sort of put in the same box when they're, you know, postmenopausal sometimes. Mm. And and actually, these are my people. Why am I not writing about this? I would be lucky to write about this. And that I think was a that was an, a maturation arc that we haven't seen much of in and just like that. Absolutely, I was so I was relieved to be honest because I was like Harry's being a bit vile here. And then it was like, oh no, it's 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 preying mm. on her own insecurity because she you know had a cane herself not so long ago. Mm. So you know you could understand maybe a kind of a uh, and like you know we we all have those hang ups. Um, mm. Very few or of us just, don't. Yeah, ugly patriarchal <sighs> awful stuff we've internalized. And that's that messaging we've internalized being raised in a patriarchy and hundred percent. And many of us have educated ourselves or been luckily being educated, let's mm. be honest, uh, to get past those things. So even if we feel them, we recognize them for what they are. And Carrie has too, because she spent her whole life reading Gloria Steinem, even when <laughs> she <laughs> was completely and exclusively obsessed with shoes and dick. Like <laughs> But I also liked as well, there's a moment when I think it's Laurie Steinem is speaking and the camera pans around to the women in the room and they were all styled really beautifully. Mm. They weren't, do you remember the episode, this is a bit of a deep cut, I think it's the first season where um, of Sex and the City where they go to a married couple's kind of party and what they did was they put all the couples in uh, blue and beige like a pale blue and beige and then the four girls were in fabulous bold outfits you know like mm. Samantha was in red Carrie was in black or something they were all in a vivid colour so they really stood out as these singletons and I'm really glad that they didn't do that to these women that they actually they all looked quite beautiful and and varied and kind of interesting and then I even love like the woman when Carrie's like sidling up to Gloria Steinem and the woman is like just get out of the way this is where the bathroom is I mean mm. I'm like that now mm. I'm going to be a terror when I'm 75 <laughs> I'm going to be an abs I'm going to be a beast yeah and there were just nice details like that that I felt were missing from season one where she bumped her opportunity to speak to Gloria Steinem is when she, Gloria Steinem's coming out of the loo yeah and things like that that used to be in the old ones yeah. that not, not commented on it wasn't it's not a story point it's just that truthful, oh gosh, oh, you're just coming out of the loo and you've bit, you've just washed your hands and now I'm like wanting to talk to you and stand you and stuff. I just loved, there were a few things like that that I loved. Um, Did it ring true? Was it, how was it, how was it for you when you met Gloria Stein? Deborah? I mean, tell well, the readers. She was, well, my story is I was in New York doing a show, didn't know she was in the audience. She came to come backstage and the bouncer didn't know who she was and she didn't have a backstage pass, which you had to have at that venue. So they were trying to send her away. My very close gay friend in New York, who was neither Stamford nor Anthony, Indeed. Um, Wesley, saw what was happening and was like, oh my God, the bouncer's not letting Gloria Steinem in. And he tried to say, she's the most famous feminist in the world, probably. Yeah. The bouncer said, well, I've never heard of her. So Wes took off his backstage pass, gave it to her and said, don't worry, I'll get in, you take mine. What a friend. What a friend. What a, what a, what a man. I thought he would have, she would have walked off, I wouldn't have even known her. Someone would have said to me, oh, we saw her in the audience. And you would not have slept a wink if you knew that. Gloria no, Steinem was turned away from the guilty On feminist. my fridge, I Could have a imagine? little bit of paper where she wrote her email address down Ooh. in her handwriting for me. And it's on my fridge because I just, I mean, one day I'll frame it. Um, so then when you met her, yeah, did you, she, did you, how were you? She how, was amazing. Compare and contrast to Carrie. Because um, I thought Carrie actually was very neat and lovely what she said. She just was like, thank you. You know. I, I. Did you cry? No. Well done. I no. I had pictures with her, and just told her. She said how much she enjoyed the show, and a friend of hers said she had to come. Was really into the guilty feminists and said you're really going to love it. And she said she really loved it. And I said I'd love to her to be on it. And then since then we've had some emails about oh I'm writing a book at the moment, but when I'm finished, you know that kind of thing back and forth. I find it really difficult. I'm not pushy about those kinds of things. No. I I find it embarrassing no, to, to keep classy. asking. But hopefully at one point we'll be she'll be on the guts from this. I thought that she did brilliantly because sometimes it's very hard for real life people and all the, the baggage that they take with them to kind of fit into a world. And she had just this wonderful, relaxed, seamless oh, energy. Really looked like she was there. Yes, where sometimes like, like people can acting. totally unbalance it. Jerry Halliwell, um, oh, though she was yeah. playing a character. But, you know, there have been some clangor cameos in 
Sex and City where you're like, oof, like yeah. woof, that Agreed. is rough. But she did really well. She did so well yeah. and she really looked like she was there. And she looked so cool. What she would say when Just she said, cool. you know, this is a re- this is revolution. Every revolution yeah. starts with a conversation. I was like, I loved her. Classic. So I loved that. Yeah. Um, and there were just other little bits, you know, like Carrie saying, I'm not old. I've got, still got friends who call me dude. And yeah. then Seema immediately calling her dude. I was like, dude. that's like the, that's like the sex of Steve old. So there were some lovely moments. I liked Seema being, Seema's a great hype woman. And when she's mm. like, don't be afraid to be transactional. Mm. She is a work pal. That was all really good grounded mm. advice. Can we now get into things we found tra- Tra- challenging and we, yeah the, and the, listen sex, in. sex the city's family yeah sometimes as family ages oh, yeah. we have issues 100 percent. but we're allowed to they criticize say, family they say the, a weird thing at christmas dinner That's but you right. still love the person you still love the person but you really need to criticize the so here's the thing okay Whew. i am going to put this out now on the Tell table me. i think one of the th- the the i think I okay. <laughs> I think said, Michael Patrick King did, and his team in the nineties mm-hmm. put together a show that had some absolutely delicate ingredients, extremely finely balanced. They got that special sauce, and I think he's lost the recipe of the secret I sauce. Agree. And one of the things, if Michael Patrick King is listening, or anyone knows him and can get this to him. The thing that I think I can analytically say about the old Sex of the City is this. Samantha was, I think, the very first truly sex-positive character, female character on screen, and she was very dignified and very high status and very elegant with it. So it was her constant poise, the way she held herself, her posture. She looked down on the world for not understanding what a joyful, important, human action and activity and communion that sex was. She's like, I, I'm the only one that seems to get this. And so it was from a lofty mountain. It was from, absolutely. And she, her dignity was there. So she could say to a man, you've got funky tasting spunk. And then when he'd be like, what? And she'd you say, jizz. Joy juice, sperm, whatever. And she'd say a hundred synonyms for it. But in every single one, she's looking down at him and saying, you are expecting something from me. And she says, we don't call it a job for nothing. That speech is iconic. Um, uh, Jaw alignment, breath control. Mm. Honey, they don't call it a job for nothing. Exactly. And it, and it just... She always had this massive dignity. She'd status with it. She'd power with mm. it. And when Carrie walked in on her blowing the UPS guy and was very embarrassed about it, Samantha called her out and said, you're shaming me for this. You feel embarrassed for me. And she says something like, I will blow whomever I want as long as I can kneel and Mm. and breathe or whatever she says. But she says it in such a high status way. And Carrie goes, you're right. I was shaming you for something that there is no shame in. Yeah. So now compare that with this Uh week's episode, which to me seems like, prestige sex in the city like the fans want more sex quickly yeah. write something in we would have written now some people are going to go charlotte would never charlotte would never i don't agree with that charlotte sometimes did another deep dive do you know what i'm going to say about trey and a little activity that they used to engage in is it the ribbing the tucker slingers that's right uh everybody else you know it as well as i do everybody else including samantha was like no i uh, don't go there. you don't return you don't return the you favor don't return samantha's like oh lean in but also like you don't don't feel you have to return the favor and charlotte's like oh i love it and so i was like Trey likes it at the time i remember seeing it and but she was also like she liked it yeah and so occasionally she would be surprisingly Charlotte? racy yeah so and i also we're seeing her Alone in her bedroom with her husband. I like that Charlotte's matured. I like she's that evolved. she's she's evolved. She's not scared of talking about sex anymore the way she was. That's fine. But firstly, no woman says "come on my tits" when she's wearing a lapel bra. That's just basic. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> the lunch that follows. What about a Primark? If she's never, Charlotte's never even seen, Char- 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 never seen Charlotte doesn't want Primark is. Yeah, I, was, I was asking for a friend. Um, uh, can you say what you thought about the lunchtime conversation about Harry 
Harry's ejaculate being invisible. It it, it was. I I wondered who this was for. <laughs> target audience because we didn't ask for this we didn't ask for this we they didn't ask we for did, this but we didn't i mean they think we did. it was like this deep dive into harry's balls literally that nobody asked, nobody for. asked for like it's about like sex isn't always sexy mm. can we keep it sexy guys mm. because like again and this leads on to i thought you're actually gonna so just to, to echo i i i think charlotte has had a wonderful evolution in lots of ways i think that her and harry started out with a very strong sexual connection mm. so it fully makes sense makes to me sense that, that still that's still a and, really yeah. like strong part of their relationship and also that as as charlotte has become more comfortable and accomplished in herself she is like <clears throat> well if you're with someone this long well, let's try it let's give it a whirl makes total sense to me and also like i i i also think that um charlotte has really made good on the promise when she said Let's be each other's soulmates and men are just these mm. these fun additions because she has a bunch of soulmates. I love when Harry and, and Anthony are having dinner. Like they're they're mm. her two husbands. And like mm. she's got this wonderful balance. She doesn't look to Harry for everything. Mm. She looks to him as oh, her yeah. as her she co-parent, her team partner. Assumed that he wouldn't go to the the, the, the Met guy. Yeah, she's she, which 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 I, I I love, and I just think they're playful with each other, and that all makes sense to me. And Harry's a very playful man, and he brought her out of her shell in many ways sexually. So we love that for him. However, I never, I literally covered my eyes in that scene, and then I also with that breakfast, I I just don't, I didn't in, enjoy. I was just going no, no. I oh, didn't enjoy. Oh, I was literally close. Covering my eyes and cringing in fetal positioning. And, yeah. and I'm going to say, yeah. writer's And I'm rumor, not shaming anyone. Not shaming anyone, because writers rumour it, if Samantha had still been there or they just let Anthony be Samantha, there's a way of doing that scene. So if Samantha had been there and it had been her, either her storyline that, like, am I dating men so old now that you know, the cum is invisible. She would have been doing it in such a d- dignified and sophisticated Ooh. and high status way. And the others would have been like, you know, I I don't believe Carrie sitting there going, jizz, 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 like a poem. I'm like, it just, what? Over lunch. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And and it's that thing where you have to believe your gut. I also feel that like, are the writers giving us the experience of what it's like to date big? Because I feel like we're in it for those good times we remember and anything mm. that looks like it, but we're we're basically getting, like we're being destabilized and gaslit <laughs> into mm. thinking this is the, the good old days when they brunched and talked about sex. Mm. And I'm like, oh. But then I think you and I could sit down and rewrite that scene. I really, really do in a way where, yeah, they're talking about that because that is something that's happened to Charlotte. Now that's, mm. this is a phenomenon, it does happen. You'd be surprised about it. And I could see her, Charlotte saying to her friends, look, this isn't brunch chat, but can I just share something with you? This is so weird. Yeah. It just nothing came out. And I don't know, is this, you know, and Anthony going, it happens. Yeah. You know, and she's like, it does it though? Does it happen? I Googled it and I couldn't find, you know, whatever. And he's like, let me tell you, you know, whatever. And Carrie being a bit like, oh, you know, is this a thing? And I'm learning and I'm curious, but- Actually, I'm done with the mayonnaise or whatever. You know, like there's yeah. a way of doing it where, yeah, okay, right, it's fine. they're in their fifties. Yeah. So this is this is a thing that wouldn't have happened to them in their thirties. It is how now happening. I think it was okay to explore, but the way they did it was like, let's have everyone be as graphic as possible over brunch. Uh, and I was just like, it just it, isn't it, how they used to write it. And you've used a really important word there curious Carrie Mm. has lost her curiosity so when she's sitting on the bed with Shay and Lyle Mm. and Miranda and they're all talking I mean this setup and relationship is fascinating and also what's a key I think is Miranda's comfortable talking about it she's kind of fascinating and and interested and Carrie's sitting on the bed so uncomfortable and Mm. curious why am I still in this room Mm. and I'm like now, I get it when people are maybe emotionally incontinent around you or mm. sexually graphic when you feel you haven't earned that connection yet, right? Mm. I, I get it. But at the same time, it felt like a very safe space mm. and it's like and her Miranda's oldest been her friend, friend. for a million years. For a million, and Miranda's like... And she is a sex writer and a love that's writer. That's what I'm saying. She and used so, to be a sexual anthropologist. And so before, she would have been like, oh, this is interesting for my column. You know, like... That's the thing. Strap-ons, think about them. You know, what else? Strap-ons, polyamory. So then, then they were giving you gold there. But then they 
they she would have had a whole themed episode around mm. what do you strap on or you know like that whole episode about the vibrators your appendage? Or, yeah you know, whatever what's your exactly what's your appendage or what what can you take off at Penis the end of the ending, day something a hundred percent that and it would have been really an interesting kaleidoscope around that which I think you know would have been very interesting but also polyamory like Carrie would have been like I couldn't I'm wondering could I yeah you know, have... I had my two, monogamous ideal, so maybe... Exactly, could I have two boyfriends? And she, it could have been an episode where two men... She was, you know, just dating, but she just saw two men in one episode, but it wasn't. she wasn't committed to mm. either, but she was like, could I date both these men? Oh, he's great to bring to, like, for, for culture, but he's a hoot and a half for margaritas. Exactly. Like, maybe, maybe one man's not enough. So yeah. if they had gone with that old thematic storylining, if she was going back to her questions like, is one man enough? And then, or is one partner enough? Then we get to explore, oh, Miranda's having a, a literal threesome with her partner and their you know, former husband, I suppose, really dormant husband. And at the same time, you just say, meanwhile, um, Charlotte had one husband who, you know, suddenly felt he wasn't enough because his ejaculate wasn't coming mm. out. You know, and he says something like, maybe you need to find another lover because, you know, he's I mean, insecure we're, about we're this or whatever. It, we're writing it now. But I think, you know, it's just a bridge. You don't need Charlotte to be thinking about a threesome. It's just a bridge to, is he less of the man that he used to be in his mind? And she's saying, no, no, it doesn't matter. You know, whatever it is. And I just feel like those were the ways that they just built that web out. And then as you say, it doesn't really matter if everything doesn't, Things can have yeah. a setup and a payoff, and that's yeah. it. They don't have to have a three bead. But now it's like there's just like this one random moment where Miranda falls out of a um, I- isolation chamber. Not referenced before, not referenced no. after, not paid off, nothing and to do with anything. Frontal. Full frontal, absolutely gratuitous, nothing to do with anything. Yeah. And if there was any kind of link about an isolation chamber, I, and meanwhile in Los Angeles, Miranda was feeling pretty isolated. Uh, da, 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 da. And we see the isolation chamber going to she feels isolated by Che because Che's not letting her in. Fine. I get it. Isolation is a theme. But when it's not linked like that. We're also being given scenarios, not stakes. So like, again, if mm. Harry felt, that's a really good point. What a lovely story beat if Harry was like really anxious about it. But mm. he seemed to be like, well, big deal. I'd be concerned Mm-hmm. If something like that was, like, you the know, the doctor said the semen's going into, into your, your bladder. bladder. That I can't can, like, be great. Uh, what? <laughs> that doesn't Where sound like it? fun. But as well, and the old sex city, they would have had Harry freaking out and going, "It's in my bladder now." Yeah. Like, where can you get it out? Or I don't know. I'm just feeling old. Like I'm feeling yeah. like this never happened. Like the kids are away. I thought we were going to have the second honeymoon, yeah. and now I feel just like is what what else is going to start happening to my body yeah and if this there would have been this lovely scene where charlotte would have said we're we're all together honey like yeah. i'm also finding Honey's my pelvic lube or whatever you my know, pelvic like, floor isn't what it was let's yeah. do our kegels together and there would have been just some three emotional. sets of three three times, times a day, day. I, I mean don't think so. that's a, that's a, that's excessive gang that's excessive come on now. i was not I excessive mean, for some people but i i was just a bit like i felt like i was like all right god what, can, i don't have to add that to the it, fucking list of things i have to do today I jesus know. Christ. I know it is probably what Charlotte would do though. She is a perfectionist. It's true, but still three sets of three, three times a day. I guess it's you could just three do sets it. of ten, three times a day. Well, that's that's ninety kegels, Deborah. You could do it while you're scrolling your phone. We must start now. I, I, <laughs> I'm doing it now. If I took any, if that's, that's, a, that's a that's a deep dive. That's Samantha in a bar going. I'm doing mine. I'm now. doing. Oh, she goes. I can. What is it? Oh, that's in. Um, is very funny that there's a. It's actually in Will and Grace where Karen and um Woody Harrison are talking about doing kegels, and she's like. She's like, I can, I think he goes, I can lift an encyclopedia. She goes, I bet you can. Uh Hello, Guilty Feminists. It's Jessica Regan here. Just jumping on to let you know of a couple of upcoming dates for our brilliant communication workshop, Big Speeches, which takes place online. The next date it's happening is Sunday the 16th of July at 10.30 a.m., Then we have one in August on Sunday the 6th at 3pm. And then the last one of our summer season is Sunday the 3rd of September at 3pm. If you would like any assistance, help or development with communication, public speaking, confidence, charisma, all that good stuff uh, to take place in a joyful, supported environment, please do sign up for a place on our workshop. Go to guiltyfeminist.com forward slash big speeches to secure a place now. I hope you're having a brilliant summer.
Hello, Guilty Feminists. This is Deborah. We're recording more live episodes and you can come and see us at King's Place in London on July 24th. Soho Theatre on the 11th and the 12th of August. We're live from Chichester on the 21st of August and we're recording episodes of The Guilty Feminist and Global Pillage at the London Podcast Festival on Saturday the 16th and Sunday the 17th of September. For tickets to any of these, go to guiltyfeminist.com and click on live shows. I'll be in Chichester because I've written a play called Never Have I Ever, which will be on in Chichester at the Festival Theatre at the Minerva for the whole of September. It stars Alexandra Roach, Amit Shah, Greg Wise and Susan Wacoma. And it's about money, sex, power, feminism, politics and running a restaurant. For tickets, go to cft.org. Dot uk That's cft.org.uk. They're really going fast and I'm not just saying that. You can also get ad-free episodes via Patreon, Apple Podcasts or Acast Plus. And if you're passing iTunes or Spotify and you wanted to leave us a five-star review or even you wanted to go there of your own volition, we would love you forever. It really does help other people find the podcast if you follow and if you review. And now back to the podcast. What did you think about Miranda's non-threesome I, I'm so lost with Miranda What is happening? Now. I don't what is understand happening? the whole Miranda What have you done? Thing. Okay, so, so random to me. So I, I'm so disconnected This is it. another thing I really liked and I thought I wonder about Deborah. I hope Deborah likes this as well. When Brady finally was like, mom, say something. Mm. And when they're in the therapist, that therapist was 12, by the way. 12. 12 if a day. Whose <laughs> niece is she? God damn it. I was like, I would not be taking advice from Why someone who looks like my niece. The therapist, madness. What a sure madness! Great, for absolutely lovely actress. Yeah, everything. delightful. Another great style. Another, uh, but another. I don't want Lena Dunham giving me like sir, like you know what I mean. She, I was like, has yeah. the cast of girls but just this wandered off? This isn't off Lena this? Dunham girl. This girls. is Lena Dunham girls girl season one. This isn't Lena Dunham season now. one. Exactly, Lena Dunham now. Lena Dunham now. Can sure, be the therapist is sure. Why isn't she, actually, she? that would have been great. That How fun! Oh my goodness, that would have been so fun what an easter egg um but yeah no we'd love that or even like jessa or like you know but uh this delightful young lady who frankly i just would not be trusting with my family's burden at that point maybe that's my ageism reverse ageism um but yeah it was just seems strange to me this this woman saying to to Miranda, like well let's look at this okay but i did like brady finally going where are you Mom, I know you're upset about this. Mm. Why aren't you saying anything? Like Brady is saying what we're all saying. Where is, where Miranda. is, wh- who is this person? Because I know people have midlife crisis and I'm go a, through. I'm a, oh, sorry, come. I know people have midlife crisis and they, their, their personalities, they, they go through sometimes, right? Mm. But l- there is, like you said, even down to her being bad at technology and being awful mm. with her Android phone. And there's none of this, mm. none of this. But I did like, I thought it was very truthful when Carrie said, why didn't you say anything in the therapy session? And she said, because I blew us up and we all know it. Mm. And how the guilt is paralyzing her. Mm. And she's like a ghost in her own home padding about. And I did Mm. think it was very consistent. And when Steve went, I'll get a place near the bar because that's classic Steve. He's Mm. such a goddamn saint. But I I feel also the correct response was, are you sure? Not, thank you. Yeah. (laughs) Cheers. Cool. Thanks. Bye. (laughs) Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I feel like one are you sure? Yeah, yeah. One one are you sure? But she kind of was like, oh, thank you. And it, yeah, I, I just, mm. I want Deborah to come back. Remember Deborah? Mm. Steve's like one he was with before Miranda. Oh, Debbie. Yeah. Debbie. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. they need to I just throw that man. Bring Debbie back. Bring Debbie back because she was super Debbie nice. She, she wasn't the sharpest tool of the shed, but she was adorable. I think she was great for him. She was perfect for I him. Think, honestly. Yeah. I think... Miranda should have stayed with the doctor and he should have stayed with Debbie. She just had this freak out. Oh, hold on, I'm losing something. Because if, if, I reckon if Steve hadn't been with Debbie, she never would have left the doctor. It was I Steve. certainly would have never left the doctor. What was the doctor's name? I feel like it was Jeff or Greg or something. Uh, I'm going to look it up. Um, uh, Miranda dates... A Nick's doctor dates a doctor. He was the perfect man. He was the perfect man. He was literally the perfect man. He was fun. He was cool. He was sexy. Uh, He did go a little. Robert. Robert Leeds. Dr. Robert Leeds. Blair, played by Blair Underwood. Blair, wherever you are, we hope you're well. We hope you're thriving. Uh, Thank you for the memories. To me, I think 
she should have married Blair Underwood. They were much more compatible. They were much more... And he was pretty much a perfect man. Until actually he turned out to be quite toxic when they broke he up. He was quite toxic when they broke up. Yeah. When he did that weird impression of her. But I felt that off. was out of character. I felt that was really was, out of character. Yeah. I think maybe they're trying to justify it to us. Like, oh, she made the right decision because mm. he's actually a bit nuts. Blair Underwood before he... But, but yeah, yeah, like started anyway. impersonating her orgasm. And I think if she, if she, he hadn't been going out with Debbie, if Stephen had been going through, she would never have left Blair Underwood. Anyway, mm. Dr. Blair. So uh, I, I don't know what to make of Miranda anymore. Yeah. She's so in love with Che. And then Che just includes her dormant husband in a sexual encounter. And Miranda goes, yeah, it's hot. Okay, fine. That's not um, Miranda. I, again, and I'm like, okay, fine. If that is, what if that is in this moment? What if, as you say, she's going through midlife crisis, thinking, fuck it, I've never done this before. Yeah. Why not? I'm going to go for it. Then I think let her go through with it. She, that's what I'm saying. She then has a cramp and that's not a good emotional reason to get out. She'd stopped and went, Che, I can't do this. Or she'd gone through with it and had feelings about it the next day. What am I in now? Am I in a kind of thruple? Like, you know, but just... I the reason I leave is not because of the way I'm feeling. It's just because of a cramp in my leg. I don't get it. The bit, I, the bit that I didn't get. It. So like exactly like you're saying, right? I do totally understand. Like she's so in love with Shay. She's so caught up in this and the and she's fascinated by their experimentation, their talk of the life they lived earlier, and this threesome starting to happen. That is fine. I'm on board with that. What I didn't understand is her going. I'll go over here. You guys carry on because she's so in love with Shay. Mm. I didn't think she'd want. Shay shagging be... a man in the room next door. Well, she has to listen. Well, she has, that was the bit that was the bit that didn't ring true for me. Mm-hmm. And like, thank God Shay left the room. But then I thought, is she so ground down? Because I honestly think Shay's behavior was emotionally abusive in the last episode. I do too. It was not cute. It, the snapping, the 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 eye rolling, the mm-hmm. frustration where you, you're made to feel like a spare part. I was like, oh girl. The point to me where it was over is when Miranda said, I'm so sorry. Yes, I should never have had my phone on, but... My son said something that sounded suicidal. And Che's response was, you ruined the whole family scene. And I was like, if your partner's told you my kid said something that sounded suicidal to me, the only response to that, I don't care what's I'll just happened, the is, oh, my God, I didn't realise. How was he now? Was he okay? Da, 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 da. When you get all that out of the way and you're sure they're okay, then you might say, listen, I really get it, but also I really wish you just hadn't come into the taping and just stayed outside for Brady or jumped on a plane immediately and I would have understood that. The phone going off obviously was really disruptive. And so next time, if something like that happens, just don't come in and I will totally get it and I understand you were trying to support me. Like a human being. You were trying to support me and Brady at the same time and that was too much for you and that ended up having consequences for me. So next time, put Brady first because he's your kid. Yeah. That is a reasonable conversation to have. But the only response, if you said to me, if you, if you on stage, the guilty feminist suddenly burst into tears and ran off the stage, firstly, I'd be very concerned for you, but something like that happened. And then you went, sorry, someone in my family suicide. There's no way I'd go, oh, but the that big producer's near it. So I don't fuck. Like, I don't fuck. Have, mo- in that moment. Yeah, you're Tom Book me a flight. Like, I don't give a fuck yeah, what else is happening yeah. in terms of work or my career or anything or, you know, my things that I love and care about, whatever. I'm just looking at you and going, suicidal. That's all I'd be thinking That's about in that moment. And that doesn't mean you don't have a conversation about logistics later on. But yeah. in that moment, if you love somebody... I just don't see that that relationship is ever tenable again. I cannot believe they're still together. Well, I think also, but I feel like Che put on the charm offensive and this is what narcissists do. And I'm like, are you consciously aware you are writing a narcissist? How aware are the writers? They don't seem be- to be. Because it is exactly what, I, when when Miranda's like, I pick my son, Che all of a sudden, it's like, okay, we won't leave it. Like, goes along with Miranda when she's like, don't, let's not leave it like this. And says, and is like, okay, well, look, good luck, da, da, da sending her selfies from Houston, which is something Che would never do, is all loving and attentive when she comes into the apartment, is hugely affectionate and and desirous of her. And, but also performative when their husband's there and Miranda's best friend is there. It's like, oh no, we're going to go into the bedroom and then Che goes loud and clear. But it, it 
just like we have to go off and have some sexy time. Again, like, so performative, so, so narcissistic. But yeah, again, because, because Miranda actually showed a bit of like, I do have a life outside of you. Mm. Che all of a sudden is more intrigued, which mm. is a classic narcissist trait. You know. A hundred percent. Because when Miranda says, I've got to fly back to New York, Che goes, you're going back to New York. What? This is what kids do. It's fine. You don't need to go back to New York. She, and, and they're trying to keep her in LA. And I'm like, that's a very coercive thing to do. Yeah. If your partner says, I need to be where my kid is, my kid is in emotional distress, there is to be no more conversation. All you could do is exactly that. I'll, you know, I'm going back on table. Can I get you a driver to the airport? I'll ask the production yeah. team to take you. Let us get you an Uber. Uh, please let me know how it goes. I'll fly in as soon as I can. Or if you'd rather I not be there and you want to spend time with Brady, that's all good too. You just need to support that. I just think it's trying to get someone to stay... What what if that kid then did attempt to take his own life and How? you've convinced Miranda to stay in LA? I'm just like, what are you even on? If you are in bed with your current but dormant husband and your current lover, I don't think that's the time to spring a threesome. I think if you want to have that threesome, they might feel pressured. So personally for me, and I'm not I'm not outlawing sexual spontaneity if everyone no. wants to do it and they say they want to do it, but I personally wouldn't do that. I would say, how would you feel about and let them consider it? Well, I guess because it started off with them getting frisky again in the bed beside the sleeping ex. So like he didn't initiate it. They didn't initiate it. Like Che started making out with Miranda in the middle of the night but obviously I don't know was turned on maybe by being in bed between both of them mm. and again it's like Jay just is so into gratification mm. like when Carrie in last season is like can't pee for herself because of her surgery and Shay rocks over with a bottle of tequila and it's like being inappropriate in space it seems to be a real turn on for Shay and like that's fine if that's your kink but like you know, again, it's it's it, to me. There's something. There's just something so uncomfortable about it all because I see Miranda, like, is Miranda doing the best? Is Cynthia Nixon doing the best acting in the world of someone who does lose themselves in this coercive, controlling relationship? Mm. Or I am, or am I imposing that narrative because I can't see any other way? If Che were a man, this storyline wouldn't happen. This, they wouldn't have written it. That's my problem with it. And I don't see why a non-binary person has to be written this way. We've hardly seen any non-binary characters on the screen. Can we not have, and I'm not saying, I, I absolutely want queer people and genderqueer people to be able to be the goodies, the baddies, and the in-betweenies, and yeah. the morally ambiguous, as, of course, that's humanity. The whole gamut. However, we've had virtually no NB representation yeah. on our screens yet. And this seems creepier than it needs to be you can still be a good person and say the wrong thing and i worry about this whole storyline do you think just... that they try to tick so many boxes like shay is having to do so much of the heavy lifting with representation so they're not only queer they're non-binary they're polyamorous gender fluid yeah i don't know well, i'm just wondering if if i it, think yeah. that probably reflects the actor's identity i don't know about polyamory Fair enough. but being queer and non-binary and I don't know how they identify, whether they identify as gender fluid. I don't know. I buy the polyamory. I just think the old sex and again would have had a conversation about how do you feel about polyamory? It would have been a much more... Che said right from the beginning, yeah. I'm not monogamous. Yes. And I would have loved to have seen Miranda struggle with that or come to terms with that or go, how do I feel about this? Actually, do am I enjoying it? Because we were I can, anticipating I that. have a window. Because if you read The Ethical Slant which is an incredible yeah. book about open relationships and how to manage it. There's lots of stuff in it about how to manage your own jealousy, how to manage your partner's jealousy in a positive human way. We go, yeah, you probably are going to feel jealous. How do you manage that? And I would love to have had a storyline about, firstly, I would have loved if they'd have just started with Steve and Miranda, now our co-parents. He's with someone else she's exploring herself. Oh, I've met this new person called Che. I didn't need to see Steve treated the way he's been yeah. treated. 
with, oh, you're deaf. Oh, no, you can't hear anything I'm saying, which I found so ableist. And also just ungraciously dumped. I would much rather they'd consciously uncoupled since we saw them last, which I totally would have bought. Of course, yeah. Yeah. People grow apart and they always had problems. And if they just were really in a great, healthy best mates, I would love to have seen Miranda be best mates with Steve. They they co-parent. They even maybe share an apartment. And they've got different lovers, or they're in Steve's apartments. Steve's so next. affable; like you yeah. could, it was, it's, you could, buy, you could buy it from Steve. Yeah, you but know what he's mean? got someone new. They live yeah. across the hall from each other, so yeah. Brady can go back and forth or whatever. That I absolutely would have loved because then Steve's treated well, decently. She confides in Steve, like Steve, when we were together. Did, Wouldn't that have been did fun? we ever? Would you have ever had a threesome with me? Oh man, I tried. <laughs> Remember your birthday? <laughs> exactly. And you know, so that so that it's sort of like <laughs> that to me. Aiden was up for it, but we didn't want to upset Gary. <laughs> We all had tequilas and scout, remember? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that night. Um, but that kind of thing that, you know, would have been, to me, respectful of Steve, respectful of where they are now, and let her explore being in a queer relationship with someone who is polyamorous, which is very of the now, and go, how can I cope with this? Am I polyamorous? Am mm. I someone who just can't do this because that's not in my nature? Am I someone who's going to let myself explore and push through my jealousy? Am I, I, yeah. is, is the twist going to be Che becomes jealous of Miranda and Che says, I need to be monogamous with you because you're different? But they, All of yeah. that would have been They gave us brilliant. so much trauma to wade through to get to any kind of playful, joyful point, like even with Miranda's pat alcoholism. Oh, oh my God! What was that? Like okay, like, a few I'm... Negronis does not uh, <laughs> an alcoholic well, make. The, the worst part of that was I know we were all like literally Whoa. just a British person. <laughs> apart, apart so from, like, yeah. it just would have been great if the turn had been Miranda. We 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 need to have a talk to you. Is this an intervention? Yes. Yeah. Are you British? You're being you're acting really British, you, and you acted really just, British at lunch. Is it? And then she goes, all right, I'm dual citizenship. I've never told you guys. I didn't want you to know. I had my teeth straightened when I was 12. And yeah. I just, you know, remember the whole tongue thrusting thing? Well, she did have it braces. Just, so exactly. it fully tracks. Remember the whole tra- tongue thrusting thing? Yeah. And the braces. I didn't want to tell you then, but I'm, I'm a Brit. ginger. I'm a Brit. I'm a Brit. I drink like a Brit. But fine. <laughs> She's an alcoholic, whatever. But then it's just like cancelled. And in the season two, she goes to one meeting and that's and it's sort of like yeah I do meetings that I just don't think that's how it works that if yeah. you discover you're an alcoholic you go to a meeting and then you never deal with it again because God I would need a drink around Shay honestly like because I as well with the, like how do you sit through what that comedy mean? sober do you know what I mean oh <laughs> how do you sit oh through God. those uber gags sober oh and look this isn't like a pile on well I guess maybe it is like I think I think the actress is, is gr- phenomenal actor. I think the actor is great I don't. I have no problem with the actor. I have no problem with the storyline. I want to like them. Sarah but they Ramirez are behaving is, in is a phenomenal performer. Ways. Yes, it's 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 Che. That's the problem. You know. I mean, the, 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 but what what they do get right is there is a star quality there. There's a kind of. Um, but, but yeah, I, uh, I think you could still play. Someone's a performer and they've got a big ego, but it's just too much. Yeah, now, Mr. Showbiz. <laughs> can we, Mr. Showbiz, can we, yeah. can we just round this off? We've got to we we stop talking We've soon, gotta, but yeah. can we round this off by a quick chat about Lisa mm. Todd Wexley? Am I being too pedantic to say, if your husband had said, I'll do the invitations, and you'd said, thanks, that's really taken something off my plate, and you had 30 places around a, you know, a dinner table at some fancy restaurant... Am I being pedantic to say what you would do is go, who's RSVP'd? How many have we got? Because if we have got two people who haven't RSVP'd, I'd love to invite the the clerks. Because that's how I, I... I just would never turn up not knowing how many people were coming because I would assume lots of those... They're all their friends are busy and successful. Loads of people can't come to those things and send you a nice message going, I'm so sorry I wouldn't be able to be there, but let's have a drink another time. So wouldn't you be saying to your husband, how many are coming? Who's coming? Is Paul coming? Because if so, I want to sit him next to Jean. That's what you do. You don't turn up on the night and then go, nobody's here. We forgot to invite anyone. It's just not a thing. It was ridiculous. And is if it that, really, it's, thought, it's, that's it's, not oh, me being No, 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 no. I also like paperless post is like, um, you know, it's like they, they're like, 
invites, invites, like you get mm. updates, you get reminders and you, you can see who's RSVP'd as you know, the fact that they reference paperless post and that it was sitting in his drafts box. People as capable as this, I just was like, this was a placeholder mm. of a storyline where they wanted to, I, I was like, did they run out of money and they couldn't afford? Because you could have had the guests come and had all those things happen. The point of that was to get maybe Charlotte back into the workforce, show the tensions between the mum and the in-laws mm. and also have him run for office when he actually doesn't want to because Lisa wants him to be more than a money man. And I can see, I can just see the signaling of these conflicts coming down the line Yawnsville, right? But why did we have to? That it was just ridiculous. I, I, the wrong I, venue, the wrong name, restaurants with the same name, a million choices, the wrong fucking date, the wrong date. Literally, and this has happened to people I know that people have been going, oh, I can't wait to see you, can't wait to see you, can't wait to see you, can't wait to see you on the night no one shows, and the invitation said the second of August, not the second of July. It happens, and that can happen because you're expecting to see what you're expecting to see. So honestly, if he'd just gone. I just don't understand it. They're all saying, if she'd said, I've just texted Gloria to see where she is. And Gloria said, what are you talking about? And then he'd said, oh, she's RSVP'd here. Yeah. And then they'd looked at it and gone, <gasps> and she'd gone, you, you put the 12th. Or she'd yeah. said, oh, we're seeing you next week, aren't I? Isn't it next week? And that's the penny dropping. Yeah. That's what you'd say. If I texted you going, are you on the way? And I'd seen you last week and you said you were coming, but it was the Thursday, not the Friday. That I'd totally buy. But... It would take as long as it took us now, the 10 seconds it's taken us now in a writer's room to go, guys, you That's wouldn't a bit do that. Right? You wouldn't do it's that. That's not how it works. Also, they're so across everything. Mm. LTW is like I legend. Agree. She's I agree. across everything. And Even if, if she trusted her husband with the invitations, she'd have checked up on that She'd still be shift. saying who's coming because if, yeah. if there's any spaces free, I'd love to invite yeah. this new person I've just met. But if there's no space free, I won't. You just, I just don't believe it. I just don't believe it. So I found it very lazy and annoying. And then strangely, because you, I think you would be so disappointed and pissed her off because you've spent all this money. The waste of food as well was kind of grotesque. The waste of food. And the, so Four I don't know that I would be people. in the room, in the mood with my husband if this had happened no. to turn around and go, I will support you to run for city council or whatever well you see I think she did that I don't think he wants to do it I think she did that because her dad sure. was like you're all about money my daughter's an artist and in order to kind of say to her dad my, my husband's about something mm. more and actually he's going to do this ha ha mm. and the husband's like whoa 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 like that's just that's going to yes. be the tension you want me it, to be something I'm not well, you, do, 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 do. I'm like I'm, I've already had the argument and they've already made up in my head do you know what I mean I, I, I've cycled through I it I get that but the previous conversation in the bar was him saying, I know I really wanted to do this for myself. Yeah. But I don't think it's fair on you because it's going to leave you with all the labor for the kids. Yeah, exactly. So if it was something she had been wanting him to do and saying, you'd be really good at this, um, da 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 da, and he'd gone, I don't, I just don't want the extra spot. I don't know if it's mm. me, whatever. Then I could buy it. But he had just said to her, I don't, I don't want, want to leave this. you with yeah. extra work. I want it for my own ambition. I'll do it when the kids are grown mm. up because I it's something that would fulfill me, but it would leave you and the kids and it's not fair. So I'll do it when I'm older. Then she goes, yeah, he's going to do this. And he's just said the reason I'm not doing it is I'm thinking of you. And she goes, I love us without the kids or something. And she's really appreciative of it. So it didn't quite make sense in story terms to me. I felt like the reward for him fucking up her party was for her to go, I will now support you in your dream at my expense just because I want to look good in front of my dad and your mum. My it dad just, who clearly loves and accepts me as it is. Like, it's so oh, complicated. And, 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 and you see, the difference between the Candice Berg and of Enid and his mother-in-law, like they need to give her more dimensions. Mm. You know, she so she's, known. she's, yeah. because, and that's, and she's a sort of a really beautiful actress, like really kind of like, I love her vibe. I'm just like, I don't feel you're being served, mm. you know? I feel like every line is, is, it, is it, superior it, and mean. It, and it's, it's, it's a caricature mm. and she deserves better. Yeah. I, I think there could be many more shades for her Yeah, that are truthful to a woman. Think about Bunny. Oh. Think about Bunny. The Bunny writing had they did so for Bunny, many so many shades from, and all these little quirks, like you know, the c a cigarette always in mm. the hand, bathing the sun. Like there was so much more to Bunny, which is what made her so kind of like ghastly and compelling and believable. Because she was so nuanced, she was terrifying. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that mom has been given enough to do. She's not being served. Um, and I think, and again, great actress, 
brilliant, brilliant, brilliant presence, brilliant charisma. Uh, Lovely and styling. Just she's sort of saying a version of the same thing every time, and I would love to see her given more to do. But in general, same note as last week, too many characters, too many people to care about, too many people to follow, and no one's really being served. And Carrie is disappearing for me. She is becoming someone who's not, as you, I think we've hit on it this week, not Inkins. curious. Yeah. Everything's no. She's becoming a real no but person. Mm. Like, would you like to date this man? No, mm. he's too old. He's wearing a yellow cardigan. Would you like to um, write for this magazine? No, it's too old. Yeah. Would you like to come out here and do this and see this? No, 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 no. It's not not for me anymore. And I want to know what does Carrie want to do? Because she's given up her podcast yeah. now. When, you know, it folded or whatever. Mm. She's given up the Thursday night date man because mm-hmm. she didn't want any more. And I'm like, I just, that's all fine as long as I know what she does want. Well, yeah. Her book doesn't seem to be doing that. Well, like, Eda didn't write back and offer her a blurb. Mm-hmm. Nice to see that Carrie Bradshaw gets people ignoring her emails, though, because that happens to all of us. Indeed. Indeed. Don't, I mean, don't, don't feel that. I feel like that was, that was, that was a helpful thing to find out. Um, but I just need her to come into her own and find out who is she now. I'd love her to go back to her column and to her thematic stuff. Uh, to me, this show, if I if I had my dream version of this show, it would be Carrie doing her column, which is mm. what drives her, what gets mm. out of bed, what she loves, bringing together all the themes, but now what's sex in your 50s? So if somebody does find Sign me up, like. they don't, yeah. you know, there's no semen. Ejaculate, That's yeah. a perfect conversation, just not, just done the old way where she's curious and going and curating and what and curating and going hold on what else isn't Mm. what it used to be what Mm. else isn't the fourth of july and we get these pans and these montages and look i know it's trying to be a different animal and we get that but like i just you kind of it's almost like the respect we've shown the show like please show us that Mm -hmm. with with some care and craft and and not and not open the episode with an ibs gag Mm. bobby lee's only function that episode was like poop gag. i was like what is happening? I know, Am I... and it's for nothing and nowhere. It's for nothing. It's for nothing and nowhere. It's, it's also, it's yeah. It's just, you know, which it, in the old days, again, you know, Charlotte got diarrhea in, in the movie. But I mean, it, that was a star, that was an amazing bit of um, but, but it was, physical comedy. But it came from something. There was a reason for it. There was a payoff for it. It was the thing that made Carrie laugh. laugh. It was it was Charlotte's fear about food abroad. It was yeah. so many and different of all of layers. them. Charlotte's the one you'd kind of want to shit her yeah. pants. And, and, I, then, and then there was a wonderful callback to it as well when she's like, "I just feel like I've had this amazing year, and you guys have had so much trouble." And she's like, "You shit your pants, sweetie." Like there was a yeah, wonderful yeah, callback yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. You know, I can't believe we're now reminiscing about the movies. We're uh, that. I mean, that is we're, uh, that is a nadir, a low bar. But I'll tell you something again about the movies, and I know we've got to wrap up, but like. Uh, the, the second movie which we don't speak about we, we um, must, uh, Voldemort there movie. is there was one yeah, <laughs> the, yeah the movie that must be, the must not be named. named there's one scene in that which is Miranda and Charlotte getting drunk in a bar talking about being mothers and feeling mm. like they're pulling short and that is like that was to me was the most real scene of that whole film I have not seen Charlotte and Miranda have a conversation in how fucking long well actually that's a lie sorry Charlotte was very supportive of Miranda's decision to come back to New York and was like you had no choice but how motherhood changes as well and if we didn't have so many characters we absolutely could have Miranda yeah. and, you know, Charlotte's daughter Lily now going, well, I want to do my own thing, my own kind of music. I'm a grown up. Mm. Could have been a great conversation there for Charlotte Miranda to go like, what is it like having a grown up son? Because your son's grown up. Yeah. You know, they're similar, uh, you know, it's, I'm just coming up behind you with that because yeah. Brady's a bit older. What's there to look forward to? What's there to watch out for? And I think things like that, that those old moments of connection, because we're so busy rushing uptown and downtown and all around the houses and so many different characters. There's no time. There's no space. It's just poor Miranda has to just fall out of a tank oh, naked. And, and, or, or fall off a couch. Like, I don't know what she did to piss these writers off, but she did something. It's very difficult to know. So... um uh, with that in mind, mm-hmm. we must wrap up. But is there anything you're hoping for? I don't know what to hope for. Listen, anymore. I mean, I, I, Deborah, it's not that bad. We'll get through it. I don't no, know what to hope for. But I just don't for. know what I know. promising. Stories have to promise something I know. for you to hope for something. I know. I know. I, I, don't, I know don't know what to hope for. I would I, love. I think it's pro- it should be promising. Miranda wakes up and goes, Che, this isn't well, feeding me. I've given up law. I've have given never. up my. I've given up my family and I'm I'm, I'm just running around chasing you. Chase sitcom is not yeah, going to go. They're not going to deliver that. I reckon it will because... Oh, I reckon it won't. I reckon it won't. And there'll be a massive fallout and that will be, I hope, the end. But I don't think I don't think it will and be. I think it's going to go and Miranda's going to become a permanent stand. They're abusive. Stand. 
and the um uh the the I mean, we've been promised Aiden's coming back. That's all I've got. And then even then I'm like, Aiden, run. Like, she's miserable. (laughs) You were always too good for her, man. I really... Oh, Aiden. I I don't know, though. I think Aiden had his own... Aiden looked like a good boyfriend, but wasn't really. What? I don't think Aiden was... was, There were were things there. He was pushing her into marriage. He was... I don't know. I I, I don't think Aiden was perfect, but... No, he wasn't. I am interested in Aiden coming back, and I'm interested in what that does. Yeah, Um, I'm interested in, like... Daddy Aiden. Do you they, know what I mean? Yeah, agreed. But I, they better <laughs> fucking not bring him back in the last episode and then go, that's for season three, dear. I think, well, they think they, they, well, they're they going to do... Better not. Well, it's, so it was really interesting. I had the, the most wonderful... I saw a clip from um, Kim Cattrall being interviewed on The View about her coming back. And they were like, so how did this happen? Because you've seen, you know, like, how did this happen? And she went, well, the head of HBO called mm. me and said, what do you want? And I was mm. like, the flex. I mean... And she said, well, I want Pat Field. And I'm like, yeah, and a whole bunch of zeros, girl. Like, do you know mm. what I mean? But, um... Mm. They, I mean, I, I don't know what to hope for anymore. And that's a, that's a sad state of affairs. That's a sad state of affairs. I mean, who's my favorite? More Anthony. More Anthony, please. I um, I, Anthony just more was Anthony. Un- Anthony he's, was, he's, the, he's the light, you Anthony know. Anthony was underused in this episode. I didn't think he was given enough zingers in that scene because normally he's just, the way he delivers everything is brilliant. So more Anthony. I love Seema. I, I, I'm I holding like- out hope for Steema. <laughs> For what steamer? Steamer. I'm oh. holding out hope for steamer. Steamer and Steve. Because like he's so not what she normally go for, but like he'd take care of her. I wish we were in the writers' room. I know. I feel like we could bring. We in. could work this out. Michael Patrick King, if you're listening, could we just come into the writers' room and just for, can we have a 48 hour brainstorm? Please. And listen, we're not saying your brilliant writers aren't brilliant. Your brilliant writers are brilliant, but I feel like there's some. Try, I think it's trying too hard. I think it's trying too it's hard. It's trying too hard, but could we also be like the, if we were there, we might It's try dramaturgy. Too hard. You know what I mean? Mm. You know, and we operate quite in that world. Like, because you need someone to keep it straight. And I just feel like they, they didn't think about that as much as I think. And maybe they well, underestimated how sure. closely yeah. we've watched these episodes and mm. we all rewatched it in the pandemic. Well, this is the thing is the, the, the cast of Friends always say people know the episode so well. And we did it once. No, yeah, we never yeah. watched it, you know, yeah. watched it when it went out. But we don't sit around watching our own reruns. No. And so we don't really know what you know. Yeah. And you can quote everything. You can say, and they're like, we just don't know the show the way you know the show. And I think similarly, I just don't think they sit around watching their own reruns. Because probably when, you know, when you make something and you can only really see what's wrong with it. Of course. And you watch it and you go, ah, that could be better. That could be mm. better. So we watch it and see what's there. They watch it and see what's not there. So I think we just know it better. And we know when Harry's father died mother died mother died yeah yeah anyway it is what it is um this oh. is what i've renamed and just like that it is what it is <laughs> it is what it is and i'll keep watching um so oh yeah i'll keep watching it's like big i can't the, quit welcome it welcome to the rewatch if it is what it is <laughs> welcome to the rewatch you know we, we all know we're going to be there to the bitter end no matter what they do to us watch it I'm not going to not it's watch like, it. It's like, I can't uh, quit you. It's Brokeback Mountain. I just can't quit you. I just you. can't quit you. Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. It is what it is and I just can't quit you. Mm. <laughs> the two yeah. alt titles. Exactly. But it's, as always, what a pleasure to just you hang had, out with you, you and chat. At, you had me at juice, juice, juice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, absolute pleasure to get down to it. And I, you know, it's lovely to analyze something and it's even more fun to analyze something when you find it flawed. (laughs) So it's been an absolute joy. Thank you so much, Jess Regan. Have you got anything you would like to tell us about Um, that we should watch? I'm finally allowed to talk about, um, I am in a computer game that I was told yesterday I'm allowed to talk about. I've been doing it on and off for a year and it's called New World. It's season two and I'm playing Grace O'Malley, who's this fabulous Irish pirate based on a true person. But at the same time, it's not exactly historically accurate. So don't come at me. Mm-hmm. Um, but super fun. And then if you if you like audiobooks and you're doing any summer reading, I have a cluster of books for you. So. I recently read for Penguin uh, Ordinary Human Failings by Megan Nolan, who's one of my favourite Irish writers of all time. And it's just the most beautiful, astonishing read. So I'd really recommend that. Read it, listen to it, whatever you like. If you like this voice, listen to it. Um, If you want a page turning thriller, No One Saw a Thing by Andrea Mara is, I was in the booth, I I couldn't, the twists and turns were fantastic and I just, I just was riveted the whole way through. And then also if you want something quite meaty and challenging and 
just a story that will not leave your soul. I am so proud to say that I am the voice of Sally Diamond in the book Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent. They're all doing really well as books. I'm so proud to have worked on them. So there, that's some summer reading for you guys. Summer reading slash listening. Excellent. So uh, have a little check out of those. Thank you so much, Jess Regan. Um, it has been absolutely wonderful to have you here. Oh, always a pleasure. Thank you for getting me back because you know I go deep with this. I, I, we do. We do. It's a, it, we go very deep. You have been listening to the Guilty Feminist Watchers and just like that, with me, Deborah Francis White, and my very special guest, Jessica Regan, the producer for the Spotted Daily Shop, was Tom Salinsky, the Guilty Feminist, is part of the Acast Creator Network. And just like that, it's on Max, the United States, and Sky Comedy, and now in the UK. See you next time for episode five, Trick or Treat. Doesn't sound very seasonal. It's it's June. Oh, I, I, July. I, I, oh. It's July. It's July, know. guys. It's July. You, I don't know. We just had the 4th of July. What's I'll be, happening? I'll be very interested. Maybe to there's see. a time lapse. <gasps> we'd, time we'd love lapse. a time lapse. Great. Cool. <laughs>